Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so as we've heard already today, um, stroke's a significant uh, burden to our society, and more now than ever, uh, ambulance services will have a significant impact on the outcome of these patients. Obviously, we've heard how difficult it is in the pre-hospital environment to identify those uh, stroke patients, uh, uh, differentiate them from the mimics, and then even more so identify those with a large vessel occlusion. Now, we hope that uh, this research project that we're going to get off the ground in the next couple of months within Queensland will, might assist in that. So it's off the back of a significant amount of research done by some of my colleagues at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital, and they've uh, approached uh, myself and I've approached the ambulance service to now test it in the pre-hospital arena. So it is novel research, um, but uh, we're hoping it does give us an answer. So I won't go into too much deal, detail about what's already been done, uh, but what we do know, 80% of strokes are ischemic, that's why we focus on it. It's time dependent. The mortality of your, just your general stroke population is only about 1.3%. However, as soon as we start looking at the large vessel occlusions, you start to get a mortality rate uh, over, or approaching 30% and certainly a dependence of over 60%. Uh, now, this particular uh, um, study did have a rate of uh, large vessel occlusion and acute ischemic stroke of approaching 40%. Generally, most studied studies do show between 10 and 15 per cent. So where we've come from, identification of stroke, um, we all pretty much started on the FAST message. Uh, a study done in Western Australia looking at paramedics supplying the FAST found that it had a positive predictive value of just under 50 per cent. Our colleagues in Melbourne then, in, you know, about 10 years ago, developed the MASS, uh, which had a much better positive predictive value um, however, this was just to identify general stroke patients, as not to discriminate uh, those with a large vessel occlusion. So now, obviously, in more recent years, it's become important that we identify that large vessel occlusion group, albeit a small group, it's a critical group. Uh, so there's five studies that have, at, to date, been uh, validated pre-hospitally. Uh, now, the VAN uh, tool and the ACTFAST, although done in a... ED uh, situation I've included as uh, pre-hospital validation just at this stage um, for the purposes of this. And you can see varying levels of uh, positive predictive value across the tools. Uh, one study did look at the entire NIHSS and that was in the aeromedical uh, environment and uh, most of those patients were your more severe strokes anyway, so hence they're uh, more success with that study. So then we start looking at technology to assist us. Uh, in hospital, we don't just use a clinical assessment tool to identify uh, any condition. There's imaging, there's pathology and such. And now we're looking at bringing that into the pre-hospital environment. So I won't go too much more into the CT ambulance. We've, we've had that presented. Uh, in Germany, some research was done looking at transcranial ultrasound. Uh, it is able to look at the, using Doppler, able to look at the blood flow within the middle of the cerebral artery predominantly. Um, they did have some success with it, however, it does require a lot of training and repeated use of the uh, procedure. New South Wales was uh, doing something with uh, microwave. I'm not sure where that is at this stage. Uh, so in terms of definitive care, once again, thrombolysis, uh, much higher number needed to treat. I put up there, it remains controversial amongst some specialist medical groups. Um, however, it is standard of care. Uh, it can be delivered at a primary centre uh, via telemedicine. We've all heard about that today. Uh, but it does achieve poor recanalization rates in the large vessel occlusion uh, group. Endovascular clot retrieval, uh, much greater window, according to Dawn study, uh, that we can intervene at up to 24 hours now. A uh, number needed to treat less than three. We've all heard this. It's, it's very effective. There's no, no doubt about it. However, the, at this stage, the studies show the patients still need to receive, if they're eligible, uh, thrombolysis. So with all my research uh, in my uh, ongoing PhD, there's six areas that need to be improved in stroke, not just one item. Education is important. Education of our paramedics is critical. Uh, the clinical exposure, the more we're exposed to these patient groups, the more experienced we are with them, we identify them better. The, the literature is clear on that. Uh, clinical decision support tools are vital, will remain vital to, regardless of the technology that you, you integrate into it. Systems of care, clinical governance, very, very important. But uh, here I'm just focusing on technology. So EEG, as many will be familiar with EEG, used to uh, identify uh, seizure activity and such, uh, or um, epilepsy. 
It uh, measures an activity of a large group of synchronized neurons just on the scalp, the surface of the scalp. It is complicated. It is difficult to interpret. It does need, need experts. But just uh, as a simple introduction for anyone that's not familiar with it, uh, up the top of that diagram, you've got uh, low, high frequency, low, low amplitude waves. That's your alpha waves. They're healthier basically as you have increasing ischemia in not too dissimilar way to the way we see and we're all familiar with the ECG as it starts to widen. That's, that's bad. You're getting wider, uh, slower amplitude waves. That's your uh, delta waves. And those two waves are important. There are other waves, but those are the critical ones for what I'm discussing today. Where we want to go with this and what the research that's been done prior to this study that, um, by my colleagues who I'll introduce to you shortly uh, was looking at quantitative EEG. This is using a, a measure of uh, alpha to delta ratio and gives you a, uh, a simple measurement akin to a blood pressure or heart rate or a BSL uh, with a thresho threshold of where ischemia might be. Okay. So this is looking at EEG in a, a, an acute stroke with a left MCA occlusion. Uh, in a no National Institute of Health stroke score of seven, it's mid-range. And you can see that uh, up on the top there, it, th those uh, broader waves as your delta waves uh, as compared to down the bottom there, your, um, your uh, more high frequency, smaller waves, which are your alpha waves. And then on the right of your screen, that's a topographical map that's done using, in this case, it was 64 electrodes, uh, mapping the, uh, on the left your delta, on your right your alpha power. Um, in the different areas of the brain. And you can see uh, on, um, on the left with the delta power, it can isolate the location of the ischemia on the scalp. So now looking at the quantitative electro or quantitative EEG, uh, the studies that were done, uh, Foreman and Klassen were early studies, uh, they found that it, it does correlate uh, significantly with stroke severity, with radiographic findings, and in fact when thrombolized, they did see improvements as that, 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 that occlusion was, uh, was um, broken down. Uh, more recently, uh, the co-authors of now this study, the, the lead authors of this study, Finnegan and Wong, they studied the, studied the delta alpha ratio and they found that to be most discriminatory and had the highest accuracy for uh, acute ischemic stroke versus controls. So what they found is a delta alpha ratio of less than 3.7 was 100% specific and greater than, uh, for the absence of ischemic stroke, and greater than 3.7 was 100% sensitive. So you can see as a, as a diagram, as a visual aid to what that means uh, on the right side there, from a healthy control down to someone with a very severe stroke, you can see that it's mapping the location of the ischemia, and that, it, that correlates with the increasing NIHSS scale, as well as the um, delta alpha ratio. So our study, as I said, this is novel research. It's a solution that we're looking at for our decentralized uh, population. In Queensland, we have a population spread over a large area. It's very um, uh, diffuse, um, basically, um, our population is about 140 persons per square kilometre over a very large um, land, ma land mass. So our study ob objectives are to investigate the ability of this EEG or quantitative EEG markers to enable uh, a pre-hospital distinction between ischemic stroke cases and any other neurological symptoms. Uh, we'll also look at how it compares between large vessel occlusion and non-large non vessel occlusion. And then our standard of care in, in Queensland is the use of the Melbourne Ambulance Stroke Score. So we'll compare, see how the EEG markers compare uh, to, to a clinical assessment score that we currently use. Where we'll be doing it, so as a, as a pilot study, it's just a small area, a small um, patient cohort that we're going for at this stage. It'll be within the Royal Brisbane and Women's Catchment, which um, sits within, uh, on the left, that diagram, it's Metro North Health Hospital and Health Service, covers a, quite a vast area, population of about 211,000, and uh, as we know, over 65s are a high user of our, of our, of our service and um, a more, uh, higher rate of stroke. And as I said, uh, our, our density is about 140 kilometres squared versus Melbourne's 450 per square kilometre. So we've got a much more diffuse population. So this is our research team. So it's, we've gone with a multidisciplinary team. So we have Associate Professor Andrew Wong, he's the Director of Neurology at the Royal Brisbane and the lead on this research paper. Dr. Simon Finnegan, who, uh, who led on, he's the EEG expert, he led on all the, the uh, technical sides of the research. 
We've included Professor Vivian Tippett, which some of you may know. She has extensive history and background in pre-hospital research, so an asset to the team, and myself as a practicing clinician in the pre-hospital arena. So how are we going to do it? So in the early stages, we, there is no current device that has been marketed yet to give us a quantitative measure. So this is about data collection. This is a Nicolette brain monitoring device and all about recording EEGs. So that's what we'll be using. What we'll be doing is we'll be proceeding out to acute stroke patients. I'll explain that process in a minute. Uh, the EEG will be attached in five locations on the scalp and it will be recorded uh, from that point until arrival at hospital when it will be removed in discussion with the treating clinicians without uh, impacting on their treatment. Uh, the application time once trained is, is two minutes. It's very quick to apply. As you can see, for the five electrodes, there's two uh, forehead electrodes uh, that just sit between your, um, uh, between, uh, on your hairline between the frontalis mu uh, muscle and your temporalis muscle because those can inter yeah, interfere with the EEG, so it just has to sit between there, and two electrodes on the mastoid, and the third, uh, the, sorry, the fifth electrode sits in the middle of the forehead as an earth. Um, now, at, we've included this diagram specifically because, as you can see on the front, frontal electrodes, they're not quite in the perfect location, and that's, uh, that's uh, obviously Dr. Finnegan, and he, so there's, there is an allowable variation, so it doesn't have to be as specific as some people think. Um, after admission to RBH, they'll uh, have this. They'll have their uh, this removed. They'll have their standard of care assessments, their imaging, management as is appropriate. Uh, all that data will then be collected, and they'll be uh, categorised into three patient groups: uh, the large vessel occlusion, occlusion ischemic stroke, the non-large vessel occlusion ischemic stroke, and anyone else with neurological symptoms. Uh, in terms of how we'll go about an analysing this, uh, we'll. Uh, do a comparison between groups so using independent groups analysis, ANOVA, or an analogous non-parametric procedure, and obviously uh, some binary logistic regression modelling to determine which variables provide the most accurate, accurate prediction. Uh, now, in terms of future technology, and probably where the, the name SPIDER sort of came along, these are some commercially available, uh, in fact, gaming headsets that are used for EEGs. Now, the technology that uh, backs them has had some background in medical research. However, it does not have TGA approval. They have not gone down the path because there is no clinical application at this point. Um, however, obviously, uh, uh, the results of this study, maybe we, we go somewhere with that. Also, looking towards the future, there's a role for, and we've talked about a bit, a bit today, artificial intelligence in terms of predicting um, uh, not just stroke syndro syndromes, but other, other uh, post-seizure uh, um, conditions and such that could be picked up by this, this technology with the use of AI. So ethical considerations, it, is, it has been approved by the Royal Brisbane Women's Ethics Re uh, Research Committee. Uh, there's not much discomfort with the, applying this, uh, these, this device. Um, they'll be non-identifiable. Uh, those that can't give, uh, give uh, consent will have substitute decision makers as appropriate, and consent can be withdrawn at any time. Now, obviously, being an emergency uh, situation, we don't want to delay the care that these patients receive, so uh, we will get delayed consent that will be formally done at hospital at a later stage, and that's been approved. Uh, paramedics, though, on scene will use their judgment in applying this device. Obviously, if the patient does not wish for it to be applied, that goes without saying. Uh, study funding and support. We've significant funding support from the Royal Brisbane Foundation, University of Queensland with uh, the equipment they've, they've, donated, they've allowed us to use, and uh, obviously Queensland Ambulance in terms of uh, staffing, my time, and uh, ongoing support for it. Now, in terms of study criteria, um, we will be using the AMPDS uh, card 28 to identify potential candidates. Uh, it'll be administered as per standard, uh, and or the use of a the opinion of attending paramedic as to the presence of stroke. Now, obviously, we don't want to delay care. There, there's, there'll be strict instructions, no delay to care. So we are dependent on the AMPDS, and obviously we know, we know the, the issues related to that, but uh, that's just what we have to work with. Um, uh, it will only be in the Royal Brisbane Women's Catchment area at this stage. 
and obviously we'll exclude anyone under the age of 18, those with pregnancy and uh, previous craniotomy can affect the EEG results. So, uh, so based on a uh, statistical power of, of greater than 90%, we've worked out on previous studies that we need to recruit about 55 patients in each of those uh, groups that I discussed earlier. Now, obviously, for the LVO group, we, we know that's going to require a lot uh, more capturing of non-LVOs before we, we capture that group. Uh, so, on a rough estimate, uh, judged based on about uh, seven to 900 acute stroke activations in Metro North region, we're probably going to need anywhere between 200 and 300 patient recruitments to possibly get to that number. So, we're aware of that, and we estimate between six to uh, eight months to achieve that. So in terms of how we will recruit, sort of gone into it, it's at the triple zero call. The uh, call taker will perform the uh, AMPDS stroke assessment. Uh, then that, provided that's positive, they'll refer that, uh, they'll dispatch a standard response. Um, the clinical deployment supervisor will be advised about the case. They will assess it. If it's determined that it is a likely or potential stroke patient, they'll then attach the study uh, paramedic who will proceed out and rendezvous with the crew. Uh, Let's do a further assessment, attach the EEG, and then transport onto hospital. As I said, uh, minimal delays at any stage with this uh, with this research study. So, any questions? <laughs>